Due to my wide range of interests and things I want to learn, there's infinitely more content I want to consume than I have time for. And so, it's important that I make my learning process as efficient as possible to overcome information overwhelm and start creating things I want to. I've created systems to simplify and automate the learning process, and by watching until the end of this video, you'll be able to set it all up for yourself. Since I'm lazy, I want to do all my reading and note-taking with as little apps as possible. And right now, it's been reduced to two apps, Readwise and Obsidian. I've been starting to use Readwise's Reader app as an all-in-one reading tool that combines all of my different content sources. It's replaced my bookmark app Raindrop as, instead of having all of my bookmarks stored here, I can just go to the article and using the Chrome extension, I can just click on it and it'll automatically add it to my Reader app. And then from there, I can start highlighting away. It's also replaced my Kindle and Calibre for reading ebooks as now I can upload different EPUB files onto the app and instead of only being able to read it on my desktop, I can now read it across my phone and other devices. It's also replaced my email for reading newsletters because now I can forward the different newsletters I'm subscribed to in which I can see all of them in this view here. If I go to my emails, I can choose an email, go to more, filter messages like this, create a filter, and then I can forward it to my Readwise library email. And lastly, you can also unroll Twitter threads. So if I head to the tweets page, you can see I have one here. And to move it here, usually at, uh, at the end of a thread, people will put Readwise save thread, which then adds it to their account. But you can also like the reply that the Readwise bot gives to also add it to your own. And to navigate all these inputs, like you already might have seen, I can easily use the different hotkeys to switch between different views. And when you actually are on an article, you can still not use your mouse, as you can just use arrow keys to move up and down, you can press H to highlight, unhighlight, and to annotate. There's so many different options. But of course, you can also do it manually with your mouse. And if you maybe forget the possibilities of this app, you can always just press Ctrl K in which it'll show up the command palette where you can see all the actions you can perform. But even if you don't want to read on this app, maybe you use a different app, you can still integrate these different platforms into your Readwise collection of highlights. In my case, I also use Shortform, which is a book summary app, and they have their own highlighting system in here. And since it's a paid product, you can't really send it into Readwise Reader. But luckily, in Readwise, you can still import Shortform and lots of different apps just by connecting them. But once I consume all this information, it needs to go somewhere. I've been using Obsidian for the past year, and it's become my database for anything idea or information related. Everything ranging from highlights, thoughts, school notes, daily journals, and video scripts all go into here. Since I also use it for my projects and creative outputs, I can find what I need thanks to features like full text search and connecting notes. So how do I bring my highlights into Obsidian? Luckily, Obsidian has its own official Readwise plugin, which we can open by going to Settings, Community Plugins, and search up Readwise. Enable, Enable Options, and Connect. So now we can customize the settings of the way our highlights are imported. So in Obsidian, there's different folders you can use to store your notes. And in here, I just choose which folders to store them in, depending on their type. And you can also format things like the note title and the content inside. So in this case, I just have an emoji to signify that it's a general input note. 
And you can see how the settings I have here are reflected into um, a sample note. First off, I like to include things like the status. Yellow just means that I'm currently processing the note and integrating it with the rest of my vault. I can also tag the kind of input it is. In this case, it is apparently a book. You can also add the title in the note, image, and some metadata, like the author, and of course, the source of the note. And next is the header for where the highlights are going to be stored. In this case, it's just pretty simple. I just have a notes header, highlights, and if there are highlights, I just chuck them all in there. And for each highlight, you can also format the way they are rendered. In Obsidian, um, this right arrow turns whatever is the content into more of a quote block. So I just like to have a quote block for each of my highlights. And as you can see, it also includes bullet points under, like the tag and any annotations you made. And then down here, if you turn this on, you can see the different content that is ready for importing. So now we can head to my inputs note where I keep track of all my different content. And as you can see, it's now all here in the implementation stage, which is the yellow square I noted earlier. And since we set up the metadata fields earlier, you can see that you can easily access the source, find out when you took this note, although this is a bit messed up. I definitely did not read all of this today. And the rating of the note, which you would fill out later on. So if we head into one of these, you can see that the note was populated pretty well. And as you can see, we have the tags, we have the metadata, and we have all of our highlights spaced out and formatted into block quotes. As you can see, any annotations are added as a little note at the bottom. So once you have these highlights, you can then process them the way you want to. In my case, I've recently read Eleanor Connick's post on how she manages her inputs and from it I found a really cool script she uses to automatically convert different headings in her input notes into atomic ideas. So in this article Andy Matsuchak is just talking about how books aren't really that effective for learning. So to keep things simple I'll just make the header that. When you're writing these headers, you want to make sure that it's a good summary of whatever's inside and that you can easily search up the terms used in the header. So in my case, if I were to search something up like this, I would probably search a book and then learning and then it would direct me to this header. So yeah, let's get the script running. To set up a script, just create a new folder to put the scripts in. I'm just going to call it JS scripts and then I'm going to drag it inside and then I'm going to open where this folder is in my system. I'm going to drag it from my main vault and if we open it, I'll just give you a sneak peek of what's inside. It's just JavaScript code. Um, if you do know JavaScript, you can edit it, but if not, you might have to just follow the same workflow as me. Basically, this script turns all level 4 headers into new notes and then puts them in a summary header if there is one. So I'm going to put the summary header and I'm going to head to Templator to add the folder for JavaScript scripts and then Next, I'll have to go to Quick Add, another plugin, create a new macro. I'm going to name it Turn Headers into Notes. And for user scripts, I'll use the Zettelizer script. So if we head back, you can now add a command for it in the Quick Add settings. Turn notes into headers. Oops. Turn headers into notes. It's a macro. 
and then add choice. And then if you want to be able to call it from the command line, you can just click here to add it. Oh, last thing. You need to also have a folder to store them in. In this case, the script stores them in a folder called settles. So now, if I open up command palette, search up turn headers into notes, seems like I forgot to choose the macro. So I'm just going to choose turn headers into notes and I'm going to refresh the command. So now if we go to turn headers into notes, we can see that the new note is made. Apparently it didn't like that. So we'll try again. This time I've changed the header to not include an apostrophe. So let's just delete this note and then run the command again. And there you go. So now it creates a new note and in the script, you can also specify the template that it uses. In this case, it's just my default note template. And then from here, it'll embed the header from the input note into here. So now you can do all of your thinking and idea generation here while you use this as a single source of truth that doesn't get modified. And then these things are just cursor commands that you can jump to. So if I just press Alt 8, I can jump to it and I can start typing away. In this case, I'll link it to books. So yeah, we've consumed an article, imported it into Obsidian, extracted its ideas that resonated with us, and now we can reference this in any new outputs we create. If you want to learn more about other parts of my personal knowledge management system, like organizing and creating new things, check out how I built my second brain in Obsidian. If you found my advice to be helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. This has been John Maverick. Stay mindful.